From Chesapeake, Virginia, the Lighthouse 100.1 presents Sports Scene. Sports Scene features local, regional, and nationally acclaimed guests and excellent interviews. Follow Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Now here is Greg Bickaveras. Sports Scene presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Greg Bickaveras along with Colleen. Glad you're with us. Sports Scene Saturday on the radio at 10 o'clock in the morning on 1010 a.m. 100.1 FM and 96.9 FM. Tune in.com by typing WPMH in the search bar from 10 to 11 on Saturday. Tell your friends about Sports Scene. Twitter at Greg Bick. And you can see the rest of my Twitter handles on GJBTV.com by going to the contact section as well. Thank you to our military guest lineup presented by GJBTV.com. Phone line presented by HRSMHOF.com. A few notes. Alabama, congratulations once again. The NBA's got a lot of drama with the Nets. NFL is in full gear with the postseason. Biden, whether you agree or disagree, let's go ahead and respect the office. Great interviews, excellent guests, business segments, highlights, commentary, what tees me off. Thank you for listening to Sports Scene. We love our regulars, tourists who listen online and on the radio. Stay tuned. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Email B-I-C-O-G-B at Hotmail.com. Now back to Greg Bickaveras in the Hampton Roads Online Mall.com studios. And welcome back to Sports Scene. Happy New Year to everyone. Glad you're with us at Greg Bick on Twitter. Sports Scene every Saturday morning on 100.1 FM, 96.9 FM, 1010 AM, anywhere in the world. Tune in.com by typing WPMH in the search bar from 10 to 11, archived on YouTube and Twitter. Pleasure to talk to from Channel 3. Been there several years now. Adam Winkler wearing many different hats. Adam, how are you, my friend? I am wonderful, Greg. Always a treat to talk to you. Happy New Year. Here's to 2021 being a a little bit better than 2020, my friend. Yeah, you too, and the wife and the two kids as well. Well, let's get right to it. Uh, It's been, uh, let's talk about some of the goods and the bads. I guess the goods were, first of all, Washington, no matter what the drama they dealt with with the quarterbacks and the health issues of Coach Rivera, they still made the postseason with a 7-9 record, 7-10 overall. I tell you what, as we've discussed before, the Washington football team always finds a way to be interesting. And in our business, Greg, that's a good thing. Uh, I certainly did not expect to be covering a playoff team this year, uh, but the NFC East division was just terrible enough to where uh, that worked out, and it uh, it, it was. I mean, I, I think the most fascinating trend is that for the first time in a long time, Washington was likable. You know, you, you had the story with Ron Rivera and his health. Like you mentioned, you had the, the Alex Smith comeback story, which was incredible. And then, of course, Saturday night in the, the, the NFC wildcard playoff game, you have Taylor Heineke come in and, and, and set the league ablaze, uh, albeit in a losing cause. So uh, kind of a, an interesting turn of events. Washington, a little bit likable. Of course, this is all without mentioning the name Daniel Snyder. Yes, absolutely. And he kept a low profile. I mean, there were no fans there except for maybe one game or so, but uh, very few was not many distractions, but there were a lot of distractions in the team that Rivera had to deal with. Some of his press conferences were hilarious because it seems like the message the reporters are asking were sometimes kind of personal for Rivera, like something that only him and his assistant coaches and his inner circle would ask. But um, he dealt with it the best he could. I, I really I think he did a, a great job. I mean, he certainly didn't bring any of this on himself. I mean, it's been basically 54 weeks ago when he was hired, and you just go through the litany of things that, that have happened from the, the pandemic to the name change to the Washington Post expose about uh, the sexual harassment in the organization, having to, to cut Darius Geis for... Uh, for alleged domestic violence, having to cut Adrian Peterson, and then the cancer treatment, and then the Alex Smith. Uh, none of these are, are self-inflicted wounds, per se. But I think in terms of steering the ship, I think Ron Rivera did it as, as good of a job as anybody could have done. And you make a good point. Daniel Snyder stayed out of the way. Uh, obviously, he's in, engaged in all of these, these legal battles uh, as the drama continues, but 
seems like he really did let Ron Rivera run the show, which I think is evident by releasing Dwayne Haskins, who at this point we all realize was Daniel Snyder's pick. Right. And Rivera was not going to put up with it. He's been to the Super Bowl before. He had Cam Newton. He's had a great pedigree with the Bears. He wasn't going to put up with the immaturity, the, you know, the body language, the negativity, the bragging. He just wasn't. You could tell he has patience. This was not the year to test his patience. No. And it's, it's one thing to, uh, to perform poorly on the field and not get better as a player. But then when you violate the COVID protocols, not once, but twice, and you put everybody else's health and everybody else's family in jeopardy, including your 59-year-old head coach who just beat cancer, it's time to go. So I, I applaud uh, Rivera and the organization for, for doing the right thing. And it's time for a fresh start for Dwayne Haskins, who's clearly... Washington wasn't it. Yeah, and luckily they didn't need the Carolina win, per se, to make the postseason. But uh, they got a little bit of a break with the Eagles, and the, obviously they tank their game you know, against Washington. But regardless, Washington did make it. But uh, that basically cost the Eagles coach's job. That, that's just a messed up situation. Just, you know, yeah. I, three years ago, Doug Peterson is the, the king of Philadelphia, uh, as he uses a backup quarterback to win the franchise's first Super Bowl, and and now he's out of a job, and, and uh, yeah, a lot went into it. I, I think the the Carson Wentz situation was obviously mismanaged. Uh, you could start by <laughs> giving him that that fat contract that's going to end up being a waste of money. But yeah, the uh, the week seventeen game number two fifty six when you you play Nate Sudfeld because he's been there four years like that. It's just weird, and I think the more the stories come out about the the relationship between Doug Peterson and, and the front office management, we realize that there might have been a little bit of uh, vindictiveness there, a little bit of spite there, and maybe the writing was on the wall, and, and that's kind of how it played out, too. But yeah, totally, totally fascinating, but it, it certainly helped out Washington because they were able to get in the playoffs, and that in turn gave Taylor Heineke the stage. Yeah, former Old Dominion quarterback. And, of course, um, you know, one thing more about Peterson, he treated that game like it was a preseason game in the fourth quarter. I mean, who in their right mind does that? He treated it like a – that's when you do the preseason. I know you didn't have a preseason, but regardless, he lost major credibility. That could affect his future coaching hires. You know, he might become a coordinator again, but, uh, you know, decision-making is so important for sports. And, you know, the – yeah, it was, it was a it was a terrible decision. But the the thing that I I keep going back to is it was reported that he was going to do the, do it earlier in the week, and I read it two different places, including the NFL Network. So I, I don't necessarily think it was you know oh we're going to lose this game intentionally. He just didn't give his team the best chance to win when they had a chance to do so when it was a close game in the fourth quarter. But the plan was all along to play Nate Sudfeld, and we can debate all day long about why you do that. It makes zero sense. The guy's been a third-string quarterback for four years. This is high school. This is senior night. You don't reward the guy, like you said, in, in a preseason game. This is week 17, and it matters to a whole lot of people and a whole lot of other teams. It just might not matter to you. Uh, but if it was a, a taking process and he wanted a, a pick three, three picks higher in the first round, well, a whole lot of good that did him because he's not the head coach anymore. So I just, I, I think it was fascinating that it was the plan all along pre-reported was that Nate Sutton was going to play, but when it did become a clutch game, he chose to play him in the fourth quarter, and that's where the head scratching it, it takes place. Absolutely, and of course, you know, Dallas could almost made the postseason. The Giants almost made it. Washington didn't make it. So, like uh, Coach Rivera says, let's move on and, and look forward to the next year. But um, let's get right into the seven five seven a little bit because Heineke was a big part of that, and I'm sure his stock will grow in 2021. But let's talk about uh, and you and I talk, you know, by other means as well besides this. But um, this has been a rough year for Hampton Roads. I mean, right now, one high school league after another, and city is canceling winter sports which means how can you play high school football in the practice in the winter when the winter sports are already canceled and most schools are going virtually from home like your 
family is right now with, in the other room. I just don't know how that's going to happen. Some people aren't, don't have the means for testing and COVID. Some people don't have the financial means to do this. Then you're involving stadium personnel. You're involving all types of busing, traveling. You know, the tides still are on the fringe. They didn't play in 2020. The Admirals are not playing at all this season. I mean, what's the state of 757 Hampton Road Sports? It's slim pickings, Greg. It, yeah. it, it really is. And, uh, you know, the the pandemic has hit this region. I mean, no, nobody's been abused to it. And let's just start with that. Sure. Everybody's been impacted. But, I mean, the fact that we don't have a professional franchise here has really crippled us because it's the professional franchises. It's, it's the Power 5 college franchises um, that have been able to sustain because they have the financial means to be able to make it work. And we have the tides and we have the admirals and they can't function without fans. Mm. That's their, that's their business. They, they can't play in front of empty arenas and, and you know, broadcast TV. That's just, that's not part of the, the methodology of minor league sports. And we don't have a power five program. And obviously old dominion football, uh, decided not to play, play football this fall. And that's a financial decision too. And, um, it's been tough on the on the high schools. I mean, we we went from you know that March thirteenth all the way up until Thanksgiving with literally no local sports here uh, until the college basketball program started playing. And uh, as you touched on the the high school, it's going to get worse before it gets better because mm-hmm. you, with the the metrics here, you're not going to be able to play sports indoors, and that's what we're, we're finding out. The, the basketball, the wrestling, the indoor track, those seasons are getting scrapped. And it's my hope that the positivity rate can go down a little bit before we get to high school football season. And the fact that high school football is outside, I think, will be a little bit better, too. But I don't think you're going to be able to have fans in the stands if we do have high school football games. So it's just, it has been a rough go. And, and you know, as I said, everybody has been impacted by this. I know your businesses and your livelihood. I mean, it's, it's really been a tough situation, and all we can do is just, just hope and pray that we can get this vaccine and we can get our teachers taken care of and we can get our frontline workers taken care of it and get everybody uh, healthier and, and happier and get back to, to this, this sports scene that we love so much, man. Yeah, there's only so many human interest stories you can cover without events. I mean, it's all about games. I mean, the NFL, you know, I went to eight NFL games in Washington and Baltimore, but they've got the testing, they've got the protocol, and they still had multiple COVID tests. That's why I'm not so sure about high school football. The NBA has been hit hard. You know, Major League Baseball even had some issues with the Dodgers in the World Series, as you well know. I'm not sure about high school football in the spring, possibly the fall, but if the NFL has all this means and all this money and they're getting games shifted to Tuesday and Wednesday, you know, and Thursdays and Mondays, double headers. I'm not sure about high school football right now. It certainly, it doesn't lead to much optimism. I mean, the thing is, if it's not, if it's not safe enough for students to go to school, how is it safe enough for them to practice and every day and to play and you know like you you touched on there's issues with transportation i mean it's not going to be a level playing field if if it's virtual learning and the student athletes are responsible for getting to practice themselves you know you're going to have one high school in one division that has a whole lot more means than another high school in another division and that's not fair because if those teams are supposed to play each other or maybe in the postseason and somebody's played three games, another one's played six. It's just there are a whole lot more questions than answers right now, and I, I do think you're right, Greg, in saying that it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's going to happen, but hey, maybe we're maybe we're in for a miracle. Maybe we can find a way to, to pull this off, but it will be far from a, a normal high school football season. It'll be about as far <laughs> as far from normal as you can get. 
And I'm going to leave this segment on this note. I mean, look at college football. You did have a Final Four. Alabama won. Same movie. You already know the ending every year, it seems like, with either Alabama or Clemson. You know, then occasionally Ohio State. But Ohio State, and my dad was a big fan. I enjoy Ohio State. They're nowhere at the level of, of Alabama. It was very obvious. But, you know, you had bowls with teams with losing records. Now for high school football, you got some cities in the state that are okay. But how can you align it for a state championship when it's an uneven balance? That's... That's just nuts. And and you saw college bowl games get canceled the week of. I mean, that's, you know that's going to happen in, in the high school playoffs. You're going to have, you know, you're going to go to move games around in the postseason. And, and that's why they're having a, a a smaller regular season is to have a postseason. And Greg, you know, you know as well as I do, it's about it's about money. It's about finding ways to make money and, and pay for the streams. And uh, you got to get to the postseason. And if these teams aren't healthy enough to play postseason games. You can't pay to stream a game that isn't played. Yeah, and high school football needs the gate, too. So, you know, even though it's not college or the NFL, they need a gate. They need the concessions. They need, you know, people to spend money, too, and buy programs, whatever. And you, you don't even see programs in the NFL. So I'm skeptical till next fall for high school sports in general, but we shall see. We'll come back with part two of the interview with Adam Winkler from Channel 3 after this. A tradition of excellence for over 50 years is the Aberdeen Barn Steakhouse in Virginia Beach. Start your experience off with she crab soup, an assortment of appetizers such as the fried oyster, Rockefeller, crispy calamari, just to name a few. Aberdeen Barn has the finest premium steaks, prime rib, grilled tomahawk ribeye, seafood, chicken, pasta dishes, and live music in a most pleasing atmosphere. Open daily. Visit them at 5805 Northampton Boulevard in Virginia Beach. Call 464-1580 and log on to Aberdeen Barn you are listening to Sports Scene with Greg Bicavaris. Now, back to Greg. Welcome back to part two of their interview with Adam Winkler from Channel 3. We touched on a little bit about colleges and teams in the 757, of course, Washington, the NFL. And, of course, uh, the postseason worked out really good this year, Adam, when you had uh, seven teams from each division. I like that. I thought the wild card weekend was wonderful. I thought it was it was greatly entertaining with three games Saturday, three games Sunday, and uh, you know how the NFL works. If they can find a way to make a little bit more money and, and bring a, an extra team or two into the postseason, they're going to do it. I realize the TV ratings hurt a little bit, but I also think a big reason for that was is you had three games on Saturday and three games on Sunday as compared to the, you know compared to the normal uh, you know two and two. It was football football all day, and uh, we're not going to complain about that, are we? No, three games on Saturday, three on Sunday, then you had two on Saturday, two on Sunday again. So it was really coming up. Paul Feinbaum even said it was very tough for the championship between Ohio State and Alabama coming off six NFL games. I mean, the NFL is such a big monster. It is going to totally supersede college basketball with no energy because of no fans until the Super Bowl is over with Adam. I really feel sorry for college basketball, but the NFL is just totally swallowing not only college basketball, but college football too. And it just, uh, I'm not sure how you feel, but, but to me, it's almost like the NFL feels the most normal and, and maybe yeah. that's because it it started when it always starts and it, it's continuing when it always does and you have the thanksgiving games and the playoffs are on schedule and that hasn't been the case for really any sport since the pandemic began so sure there's no fans in the stands and the, the empty stadiums are are different but i feel like the product is so familiar to what it has been for years that that's why it continues to be this behemoth, uh, whereas college football was such a strange play. And college basketball is, is starting later, getting postponed, and it's the empty arena. So uh, maybe that's, you know, maybe that's the, the reason, but that, that's certainly how I feel. I feel like the NFL is, is the most normal, uh, which is fascinating because they, <laughs> they, they've been, they've been just plowing on ever since. This whole thing started. They held they, they held the draft a month after the pandemic began, and they haven't looked back. Right? And it's almost like our lifestyle, Adam. You're busy. You got two kids. Once a week is perfect into everybody's schedule. There's too many NBA games, too many college basketball games. The human mind just cannot keep up. We're distracted with the internet, our phones, our day to day lives. And NFL is just like you said. It's like the perfect fit for that shoe, no matter what size a person is. Bingo. You nailed it. It, it, it. It's the exact way we want to consume and we can 
choose how we consume it. Uh, but it just, uh, they've certainly found the formula and it's working. Yeah. What are your thoughts too about, um, the other sports is like the NBA. I mean, it's, uh, you look at the Wizards. They've got Westbrook and they're still struggling. You're, you're from the state of Texas and, uh, Houston was a mess with Harden. And how in the heck, Adam, from a sports standpoint, can you have Harden, Kyrie Irving, and Durant, three of the biggest egos ever in the NBA, all needing to dribble at least 10 times before they shoot? To get a winning formula. And then you look at LeBron and Anthony Davis, they're calm, cool, collective. Guess what? They're still in first place. And the fascinating aspect of the Brooklyn situation is, you know, you've got these three all-time, and don't get me wrong, these are all-time talents, but they are scorers, and they are iso ball scorers. And their coach is Steve Nash, arguably the greatest distributor of this generation. So it's like, you know he wishes he could just find a way to take what he did best uh, during his incredible career and find a way to be like, hey guys, ball movement and distribution is is the key to winning. But I I think it's going to be incredible to watch. I'm with you. I don't think it's going to work, and I think a big reason it won't work is the Kyrie Irving situation because he just seems to... uh, I don't like to use the word cancer, but he seems to take down locker rooms wherever he goes. So uh, I point my finger at him. If this doesn't work, I think it's because of him. Because uh, Durant and Harden have played together before, and they've succeeded before, obviously, very early in their careers. But uh, I- I'm I'm very interested to see how it plays out, and I don't think it ends well. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think it ends well. And they asked um, Durant about um – you know, Harden, and he was lukewarm even with that. I mean, just gave, he said he's fun. You know, I mean, just, you know, it's just you only got one basketball, you got scores. You know, the NBA will be relevant once the NFL is over with, but uh, what about college basketball? I mean, Virginia's playing good as always, but it's it, the buzz for college basketball, is it still blinded because of the NFL or the no fans, it just no students? I mean, students are such a big part of college basketball, and I gotta wonder, you know, about Old Dominion. You're from Texas, and when you and I always kind of joke, why are they playing Texas schools? Now, during a pandemic with the travel restrictions, it's really difficult when they're playing a couple games at once. You know, Coach Jones has had health issues. you got to wonder about that whole mix, about uh, some of these teams have to travel so far, no matter what conference they're in. Yeah, they're, tra- they're playing back-to-back games, and sometimes it, 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 it's weird. They're not, even, they're not even playing 24 hours apart. They'll play it like... Six o'clock Friday and three o'clock Saturday. That's incredible. Yeah. That, that doesn't happen anywhere. I mean, even the NBA when they do back to back, it's at least twenty four hours. But you know why they're doing it? They're doing it because the entire college model needs the NCAA tournament, and you have to find a way to get these conference games in in order to have a uh, a respectable field of sixty eight. Because they have to find a way to make this billion dollar project known as the NCAA tournament, it has to happen this year because it didn't last year and we've seen what it's done to athletic departments across the country. It doesn't mean it doesn't matter how big you are, how small you are, whether you play football, whether you don't play football. You rely upon the NCAA tournament unless you're Alabama, Clemson, Texas, USD programs like that. Yeah. They have to find a way to get the tournament off and <laughs> they're going through the motions and, and play in these conference games. And you make a good point. I, I guess I never realized how much value the atmosphere brings to, to college basketball. It's just weird watching the games. It, it, it's different without, without the students, different without the, the upsets and the students storming the court, as dangerous of a, a proposition as that was. It, it, it is. It's just it, it's weird. It's different uh, playing games that, different times on different days but you know maybe this is our new normal you know maybe 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 this is this is the way our our world is going to be and and you know we have to adjust to it but i'm with you i haven't gotten all in the college basketball season and i think a big reason for that is the buzz just isn't there yet 
and that's sad because the season's almost over with a yeah. lim- with a limited schedule in February because that's a short month. And then you know you're right. Once the NCAA tournament got canceled, it killed the buzz and the momentum, even for the start of this season as well. It's not as relevant, and uh, they've they're now they're going to play in one state, Indiana. Yeah, good good for Indiana, and I, I hope they can. I hope they can get it get it pulled off. Uh, I certainly know that we, as, as a CBS affiliate, uh, appreciate having having the NCAA tournament, but that pales in comparison to to the appreciation of every athletic department in Division One in the country because they absolutely. I mean, that's the cash cow. I mean, you you know it as well as I do. That's the cash cow, and if it doesn't happen. Uh, people are in big trouble let me just say this i walked into a business and businesses of course pay sponsorships for you know uh stadiums and even for you know whether it's old dominion or uva the in postings of uh signs and billboards and the digital messages i talked to one alum and i'll just say the alum went to school in norfolk you put two and two together i said how much attention have you paid to your basketball program none this person was a die hard fan and i'm not going to say what school out of respect but uh the buzz for college basketball just is not there you take away the fans regardless regardless whether it's a pandemic or not let's just say they're just not allowing fans for one year you know how does the momentum continue it's like a relationship once you stop it's hard to start back up again and it's hard to if you do start back up again it's hard to get back what you had yeah it's tough and no no fans a lot of these games aren't on TV for our, our local programs. No, no. You know, we, the media, don't have the, the access that we once did. We're not seeing the interviews and the stories that are done. It's just, it really is. Going back to what we talked about earlier, it, 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 this, this pandemic has hit our region and our sports team especially hard. It's almost like the entertainment. I mean, you, you're at a perfect time to raise the two kids because there's not a whole lot going on outside of your house. You know, the entertainment's, the entertainment's in the Winkler house. You go out to dinner, you get takeout, you go to the grocery store, you might go to the bank and run a few errands. There's really no other major decisions you got to do as far as, okay, let's go here for two weeks. You know, that type of thing. But you got to wonder about the sustainability of it all as well. Yeah, I just, I, I, I know, I know folks are, are hurting, and especially now, you know, I mean, we live in such a, a beautiful part of the country, but when it's cold, there's, there's, there, there aren't those avenues, there aren't those opportunities to, to go out and enjoy the water, and enjoy the beach, and enjoy the outdoor dining, so it's, it's rough, we're in, we're in a rough stretch right now, and I just, I know, I know folks are hurting, and, um, you know, here's the, Here's the better days ahead. Yeah. Let's leave it on this note. Give us all the updates. What's going on at Channel 3 and WGNT as far as sports? Well, we, uh, we've we got a little bit of a, of a change as of uh, last week. Uh, I am I'm still the sports director, still the uh, main sports anchor, but I've worn, uh, worn another hat. I am uh, mm-hmm. co-anchoring our weekend morning newscast with Aaron Miller, uh, the super talented Aaron Miller, so 6 to 8 a.m. Saturday and Sunday morning on Channel 3. Uh, I'm a news anchor, so I'm still anchoring sports uh, three days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm off on Thursdays and Fridays in order to get some sleep before waking up at 2.30 in the morning yeah, <laughs> on yeah. Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, but, we're, you know, I'm, just, I, I'm excited about the opportunity to, to become a little bit more versatile, uh, especially as we've talked about for the past several minutes. Uh, our, sports, our, our sports scene is, is changing and, and adapting and have to adapt with it and uh, you know, make sure that we are, we are ready for whatever 2021 and 2022 brings. So our, our sports content, it won't change. Uh, Megan Plain is still uh, the other half of, of our department. We'll be doing sports seven days a week and doing so every night and every morning. It's just uh, it'll look a, a little bit different because uh, I won't be doing it five days a week sports. I'll be doing sports three days a week on camera and then uh, anchoring on the weekends excited about it and appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk about it yeah congratulations now tell the fans do you have to write your own copy because that's kind of early in the morning <laughs> we have a wonderful producer uh, our producer brooke uh my shift starts at 4 a.m i get in the show's entirely done two wow hours, the two hour show is entirely written uh so for the next two hours aaron and i work together and uh, you know, kind of tweak the scripts and uh change the show uh, to put it in our voice a little bit but that is the 
uh, that is the one thing I've noticed so far is, is the difference between news and sports. You know, in sports, I'm the producer, I'm the editor, I do the graphics, I do all the digital stuff, I do everything. In news, there's so much more help because obviously I'm going from talking for two and a half minutes in sports to talking for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> so you need a you need a little bit more help, but uh, but that's a, an adjustment and, and a welcome one because, as I said, our, our producer group is uber talented. Yeah, and all the best to you and uh, Channel 3 and WGNT and uh, great operations, but you have to evolve. Life is about evolving. You've got two kids. You have to evolve every day. And right now, like Adam said, folks, as we well know, sports in the 757, especially the high school level, colleges too with no fans, there's really not a buzz. And I think that was hurt by, like we talked about earlier, no NCAA tournament last year, no Old Dominion football this year, and lack of fans. And uh, you mix it up into a big bowl like – a big stew, and there's really not a whole lot of substance right now, unfortunately. And, and the thing is, you know, the substance that there is, it's not super local. And no. that, that doesn't mean it doesn't matter to our, our viewers and our consumers, but, uh, you know, you're, you're always looking to do things that matter, do things that, that impact your community. And, uh, if I can do that on the news side in addition to the sports side, and that's something I'm, I'm excited about. And, and as you said, you, know, you can't you can't just bury your head in the sand and, and, and say that everything's going to get better tomorrow. Uh, you have to uh, adapt, be be malleable, and uh, that's what we're what we're doing. And uh, I'm grateful for management for giving me the opportunity to, to dabble in news while also chasing my passion. Yeah, and people are consuming content on their phones or on their computers. And I think that's hurt a little bit about sports on TV with games is that people are already used to being online all the time, kind of addicted to their phone, which is not good, which is not good. I believe in moderation. But, um, you know, people can consume a YouTube video or they can consume our interview two or three weeks down the road if they want to, that it's there. And they, I think they kind of take the live event that's not a big deal like the, um, you know, a college sporting event that's kind of random during the week for granted because the NFL, they're going to take time and sit down in front of a TV and watch it. Bars are closing earlier too, Adam, because of the restrictions and uh, drinking laws and all that stuff. So that affects the night games, including affected the Washington game a few weeks ago too, that when the bars have to shut it down at 930, that affects the whole landscape of nighttime TV outside of your house. Without a doubt, I mean, every everybody is changing. Everybody is adapting, um, and it's just, it, especially with the last two weeks that we've had, Greg. It, it, in a weird way, it, it's tough to, to to make sports the sole focus with everything going on in our country. I mean, we love sports because it provides such a wealth of distraction yeah. from the reality. But it, it, it's tough right now amid a global pandemic and then also everything that's been going on in, in Washington to try and make sports the main focus when there really isn't any local sports happening. You're right. Adam, well said, my friend. All the best. Always good to hear your voice and talk to you. All the best to your wife and your kids and your great uh, opportunities there doing the uh, news on the weekends. At least you're getting home a lot earlier, too, correct? Exactly. I'm getting home uh, a lot earlier. It's a better schedule for for me and the family, and uh, I'm grateful for it. And I'm grateful for for you and everything you're doing for our our local sports scene. And again, I look forward to the day when uh, we have so much to talk about that we don't have enough time. Just meet at Starbucks if nothing else. Yeah, absolutely. All right, my friend. All the best to you. Have a great rest of the weekend. We'll be watching you on Channel Three. Thanks so much, Greg. Thank you, Adam Winkler, right there from Channel Three, doing a great job and a good person as well. Sports scene will continue after this. It's now time for Greg's Highlights, presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Highlights, GJBTV.com, HRSM, HOF.com, Hampton Roads Online Mall.com, GJBTV.com. Click the YouTube link for archived audio and video and great content you will enjoy. Sports scene, sports highlights, TV sports minutes, some of the fun things I've done over the years, voicing commercials on TV and radio. We always have fun with that. Creating content is something, and always great to see businesses growing each and every day, especially during the pandemic. Colleen, question of the day right here, presented by GJBTV.com. This is a fun one. Everyone can relate. Is your patience tested daily? Oh, when is it not tested? That's true. You know, whether it's here at work and different struggles there or definitely at home when you have kids and a husband, 
your patience will be tested, but God always gets you through. Absolutely. And of course, it's personal and business. And then sometimes you rehash it in your own mind, which makes it even worse sometimes. Like that uh, movie says, what, let it go? Let it go. Sports Scene will continue after these messages. Catch up on archived editions of Sports Scene by going to gjbtv.com and clicking the YouTube image on the homepage. Now back to Sports Scene with Greg Bicaveras. And welcome back to Sports Scene right here every Saturday morning on 1010 AM, 100.1 FM, 96.9 FM, archived on YouTube, and of course, uh, Twitter. On TuneIn, type in WPMH in the search bar by going to TuneIn.com every Saturday from 10 to 11. It's a pleasure to talk to George McLean from the Marksman in Newport News. George, how are you? Uh, doing well, Greg. How about yourself? Very good, very good as we enter a, a new year. And, of course, uh, still some of the same old, same old as far as COVID, but hopefully each day it's getting a little bit better. But, uh, you know, it's, it's something different, George, we haven't talked about in a while. Whether you like it or not, we're going to have a new president. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that's very true. And, uh, of course, I, I, th- I think along with that there's going to be some you know major changes that uh, – we haven't been uh, haven't been used to, so I, I, I think probably the uh, the second amendment is going to come under probably as much attack as it ever has had, and uh, we're just going to have to uh, you know stand for what we uh, what we believe in. I mean, you got you know half the country they they can't just you know shut us down. Uh, so we'll we'll just have to see how it happens. Uh, I don't I don't have a an idea yet about that. We'll just have to see how they show their hand and i'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about what happened in the uh, capital a few weeks ago because i really don't think we need to go there but uh i'll just say this violence is never good and destruction of property is never good and respect is always good so just we'll kind of leave it at that george you want to make a comment yourself yeah no i, I agree 100 percent uh you know regardless of of who you know, these people are if the, you know, they they may like steak you know and that's fine, but that doesn't mean that all steak eaters are violent people. So you have to, you know, pick uh, those those bad beans out of the you know out of, out of the pot when you fix it. So these, you know, the, the, the actions that they those people took cannot be condoned uh, by by anybody. I, I don't think anyone with a lick of sense you know does. So I'm like you. I, uh, we'll we'll leave it there. I think they need to be prosecuted. I think uh, they probably are, are on their way to doing that. I think. The number of arrests I see on a daily basis are, are increasing, so uh, we'll we'll let them let let the, the legal system work the way it's supposed to. And there's cameras everywhere. I mean, folks, just because you don't like your experience at a grocery store, you can't destroy the property. You might disagree with your ex girlfriend. You might never talk to her again, but you can't destroy people's property or infringe on their personal space. That's that's uh, exactly correct. And 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 use. You know, the, the keyword protest as your justification for doing it. That doesn't entitle you to do any of that stuff. Well, what's going on at the marksman? Let's talk about the protocol first when you knock at the door to enter and uh, talk about uh, browsing, shopping, visiting the marksman, also well, the range. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's still uh, you know going to depend on the the load, that, the you know, customer load that we have in the store. There's you know, we're restricted to. How many we can have, and then we're, we're still restricted on, on the cleaning things after the people leave the range. Uh, you know, we've got to shut down and go in every hour and do all that. But, you know, once, once you come in, you know, come to the door, obviously it's going to be locked. You just knock, and, uh, one of the employees will, uh, come and, and let you in if it's, if we're able to, to do that. But, uh, before you get to that point, they're going to be checking and making sure that you have a mask on. Uh, that you're not running a temperature, uh, any of that, you know, typical kind of stuff. We're all kind of used to being, uh, checked about. Uh, in some cases where you may have some symptoms, you know, we're, we're gonna, we got the infrared, uh, deal, so we'll, we'll check your temperature on your, on your forehead. This is a, a not, a no contact, uh, deal. You just, it just, you know, shines the, the light and it, uh, picks up what the temp is. And uh, so, you know, ask what you want to do, whether range or, you know, come in the shop. But, you know, typically if you're coming in for a gun uh, transfer, this type of thing, you will have already found out in that process you need an appointment, uh, you know, for that. And you need appointment for the range as well um, uh, to come in. Although having said that, 
there are some days where the range may not be full, and if you just you'll come in without an appointment, you may be able to get on, but that is uh, you know taking a big chance because you know, most of the time the appointments are are you know, fully taken up. Absolutely, you got to make an appointment to go to the DMV. You got to make appointments everywhere. It's just a fact of life, folks. Too is, and you mentioned a good point about cleaning the area. Every business has got to clean properly. You can't take that for granted. But that also gives people a chance to think before they walk into your place of business to clean their guns and also to keep the guns unloaded, not with bullets in there. Well, that, that, that's true. At least if you're going to be you know, handling them. Uh we don't have any restrictions, you know, if, if you are legally, you know, carrying a firearm concealed or otherwise, just don't have it in your hands. Uh, and you load, unload while you're on the range, not in the lobby or, you know, outside in the, uh, in the parking lot. So, you know, safety always has to be, uh, number one concern. Uh, education goes hand in hand with that. You know, if you know what you're doing, you typically will be safer than someone who doesn't know what they're doing. So we, we expect people to uh, you know, be uh, safe at all times. Talk about the one good thing too about uh, updates is that Facebook is great for that because you can give daily updates as opposed to the website's a little bit more cumbersome, a little bit more you know of an effort involved. But uh, talk about your store hours and uh, what's going on the rest of January and early February. Well, there's not much uh, you know change uh, other than trying to get uh, uh, the inventory, which, which is always. Uh, a, a big problem just simply because manufacturers uh, are not running at 100 percent whether that's in you know the firearms uh, uh, market or uh, in the uh, ammo uh, market so it's uh, still difficult we we get what we can get when we get it uh, and it's on a you know somewhat regular basis but it, it goes out just about as quickly as it as it comes in but our, our regular uh, hours are still running from uh, you know 10 a.m uh till uh, 6, and we do that uh, you know, Monday through Saturday. Uh, have not opened fully for Sundays uh, yet. We are uh, have been experimenting with some uh, distance learning, which is not online learning, but it's, it's distance learning. There's some other caveats that have to go hand-in-hand hand with that as far as two-way video communication, this kind of thing, for uh, concealed uh, permits. Uh so we're we're seeing how that goes, and so far it's it's it looks like it's been pretty good. But uh, you know, for the retail, uh, you know, shopping and you know, firearm, you know, pickup transfers, this kind of thing, it's uh, it's a Monday through Saturday deal, uh, ten a.m. to six p.m. And ordering supplies is not always easy during the pandemic, right, George? Well, no, it, 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 it's not because a lot of times supplies aren't available, mm. and uh, so we just have to you know when something is available that that we need, we have to stock up on it. And hopefully it'll, it'll it'll last. Or when we go to reorder, uh, you have to anticipate uh, that something you know, may not be available. And typically for a while, it, it's not. So we're we're just where before we're used to you know getting supplies and getting them in like the next day or two days at the at the most. Now it could be you know, a week week and a half before you get stuff in. Right. Talking to George McLean from the Marksman. The phone number is 872-4130, right in Newport News, but uh, convenient to all points in the peninsula, off the interstate. And, uh, you know, one thing, too, when you, one of your employees are talking to a customer, the customers that walk in, sometimes they want, you know, instant, you know, communication. And that's difficult because, uh, you know, each concern is different from the next person's concern. And with limited staff, you can only get around, but so fast and so quick. Well, I, I, that's right. So, you know, people just have to, you know, remember how your mama raised you. <laughs> yeah. Treat, treat people how you want to be treated and, uh, you know, wait, wait, wait your, wait your turn and, uh, be considerate, you know, of, of, of others. And, and we uh, typically, uh, <coughs> excuse me, don't see, a uh, an issue there. <coughs> you know, most folks are, you know, uh, been very considerate and understanding. You know, especially with this you know, pandemic and all the changes that all of us have to kind of you know put in place right now, so uh, it, it it makes it tough on everyone. Absolutely, talking to George McLean from the Marksman and George. When you talk about uh, the rest of the year as far as um, gun supplies and you know what is it good? We can never take this for granted for a first time. 
you know, first time person who wants to buy a firearm, buy ammo, what should they need to do? Should they take a class? Should they, obviously we talked about how important it is to do some self learning on the internet. The more you can prepare yourself, I think preparation is still the key before you walk into your store. It's not like walking into a grocery store, buying some apples and just leaving. You just can't do that in your store. And I think people can't take that for granted. Well, that, that, that's right. I mean, you, you certainly have to do your homework. And uh, what the, the, the bad side <clears throat> with this, uh, all, the, with all the restrictions that we have, and, and the cleaning part is where before, if you had never you know, fired a, uh, a handgun, what I'd always recommend is that you would you come in, and we have upwards of I don't know thirty, thirty-two, thirty-five uh, handguns that that was available for for rental. Now we still have those firearms, but we are no longer renting them uh, at, at this you know, juncture because of the pandemic. Because everything that a customer touches, <clears throat> we have to disinfect, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you can't do that without ruining the, the, the finish on the firearm. Uh, so that basically has precluded us from renting those firearms out. So if you're going to come in to shoot, you got to bring your own gun. Mm-hmm. So if, if, if you are someone who's uh, looking to acquire your first gun and you have no experience shooting, that, that kind of makes that task very, very difficult. Uh, the, the whole idea behind renting the firearms was, was to try out enough of them to where you discovered which one you liked better and therefore then could establish a budget and, uh, you know, acquire that uh, uh, firearm of, of that particular model. So it, it just makes it harder uh, because a lot of folks are not going to be able to, to do this. Uh, you know, if you have all stainless steel firearms, uh, typically those can be you know, cleaned uh, and disinfected uh, fairly well, but uh, outside of that, if you have a blued finish and you put you know, the stuff on it that would typically would, would uh, disinfect it uh, appropriately, it will also, uh, over time, eat the finish off and just you know, take the, the, uh, the value of the firearms down to nothing. So in order to protect that particular investment, we have to just leave them on the shelf you know, for, for right now. And uh, that, that's business that's lost, obviously. Absolutely. Talking to George McLean and you got to always evolve. The rules and the laws change yearly too. Are there some years that there's not a whole lot of changes with the, the NRA and the guns and being a store owner, George? How do you keep abreast of all the changes? Well, you just have to, you know, keep your ear to the, to the floor. Uh, uh, the, the groups that, uh, that we have to abide by is, uh, ATF. And if there's a legal change, it's going to come, you know, from, you know, uh, ATF. Uh, regardless of whether it starts in Congress or not, it's going to filter down to where ATF has to, you know, do their rulemaking process, and then they notify uh, all of the dealers. So that's how we obviously, you know, find out the, what we have to abide by. Now, as far as what's coming down the pike, you know, watch the news, read the paper. Uh, if anyone reads papers anymore, and uh, you'll get yourself educated as to what is uh, you know, going on in, in the world out there. And sometimes we can put two and two together and kind of see what's uh, what's happening. But from you know, the legal standpoint, it'll come from ATF. Absolutely. George McLean, talk about, uh, you know, all the goods. Your address, mention your phone number, 872-4130. Like the Marksman on Facebook. Folks, take the time and go visit the place. You'll learn something every time you walk in. It really is a learning experience. You know, browse, shop, visit like we talked about. So talk about all the good stuff at uh, the Marksman as far as people getting in touch and having access. Well, it's it's. Not as not as great as what we'd like to see it, but as it was, uh, you know, a year ago before the you know, the COVID stuff started, because it just restricted with the number of folks that's uh, that's in there. But you know, anything that, that you do need, uh, you know, we just you know, completed our uh, end of year inventory uh, was on the last day of the year of 2020, and uh, everything is is still uh, pretty much fully stocked. It's just maybe not in the quantity that we. Uh, used to having, but the cleaning kits, everything that you might need to, you know, for your firearm, everything is still there, just limited on certain uh, calibers of, uh, of firearms. But we're we're located at 520 Industrial Park Drive. It's on uh, the north end of Newport News. Uh, 
but you know, feel free to give us a call and you'll see what's uh, you know happening. Uh, you'll make an appointment to come in and, and just you know, take a look around, looking for a particular type of firearm. You know, we can talk to you about that, help you you know, make that decision. But we're just not uh, able to offer the, the rentals at, at this point uh, for you to be able to try a firearm out before you uh, before you buy it. So hopefully that kind of thing will return once. Uh, this vaccination, or they get the herd uh, you know, mentality deal that they're they're shooting for, and uh, this becomes no more of an issue than just regular seasonal flu. When that happens, hopefully we can get back to uh, get things back to normal. George, thank you for enlightening us. All the best for the rest of the month. We look forward to talking to you in February. And as always, stay safe and all the best to all the great employees at the Marksman in Newport News. All right, Greg. Well, thank you very much, and you guys uh, stay safe as well, and we'll be talking to you next month. Very good, George. All the best. Take care. What Tees You Off, presented by HamptonRoadsOnlineMall.com. All right, What Tees Me Off by GJBTV.com. Customer service people, we talk about it a lot over the years on sports scene since we've been doing this show, but it just doesn't seem to fail no matter where you go. If you walk into, let's say, a customer service place and the person has a bad attitude, it can affect your whole shopping day. It does. So I try to always give a smile to people and have a good attitude, even if they look like they're having a bad time. Because you never know what uh, they dealt with before you got there. That is true. When an owner tells you, try our special, you know, I talked about bones and fish a few weeks ago, but when they insist, especially when it's a friend of mine, he says, Greg, try the special. I'm like, okay. And then my words are, ugh. I have to realize that people's taste in food is not always my taste in food. Exactly. When we all have this communication at our fingertips, Colleen, you know, we can talk by instant message. We can talk by texting. We can talk by the phone. We can talk by Zoom, which I don't like. We can talk by all types of things, yet we don't communicate enough. Not not personally, that's for sure. We, we message people from the other room or sitting right next to people. I'm all about ice cream, like we talked about as far as cold desserts. But cold food, let's say you get a Mexican restaurant, which are really a lot of fun, and you try to eat it cold the next day, it ain't going to work. You have to warm it up. Well, you're not a mom, so I'm always eating cold food because something happens and it's like I never get to sit down and eat my full meal, you know, when it's warm. I'm talking about leftovers the next day. Oh, yeah, not good. Not good at all. When someone says, though, speaking of that, dessert is food. No, it's not. Dessert is not food. One guy said, we got a lot of food. I said, what what do you got? We got donuts. Well, donuts is not exactly protein. Not very healthy. Definitely fun to eat sometimes, but not shouldn't be your full meal. Yep. And speaking of that as well, we have too much of anything. Too much of anything is not good. Excess is not good. Moderation is key. I was going to say everything in moderation, Greg. All right. This is what really teased me off here. A few weeks ago, having a great weekend, come home, check the mail, snail mail, of course, and I get an easy pass from Maryland, a notification, which is never good. And, of course, uh, they twice mistake my car in the month of June for an old granny's car with one license plate letter different, and they billed me twice without checking the VIN number. And guess what? I had to call them and wait. It's a bureaucracy when you call easy pass and transportation departments and you try to get through is difficult enough. They made a mistake twice on those cameras that you see on the interstates and um, and bridges. Maryland's got a lot more than Virginia does, but it can happen by one letter off. They don't do the check the number with the VIN number. They can give you um, unfaltered tickets. Looks like people are not paying attention to what they need to pay attention to. Yes. Sports Scene will continue after this. And welcome back to Sports Scene. Always a pleasure to talk to Brenda Tusing from the Royal Chocolate right there in Virginia Beach Town Center. Something to look forward to is Valentine's Day. It's on a Sunday this year, but really it's celebrated the entire time leading up to the 14th. You're very right about that, Greg. We've uh, actually been extremely busy in the store Everybody thinks of Valentine's Day as that day or maybe the day before, but we've been very busy already planning. Uh, We have a lot of events coming up. We're able to do um, our fondue seatings. They're very popular. Uh, We've had even at Christmas time, we had people beginning to ask uh, what the dates and times would be. So that'll be on our website uh, for fondue seatings. You can always do fondue to go. We're just getting ready. We're all, you know, done up in hearts and red all through the store. 
Um, our gift baskets are beautiful. Uh, strawberries will be plentiful, they tell us, this year. So we're quite excited. Yeah, I'm an equal opportunity holiday person, meaning I pay just as much attention to Valentine's Day as Christmas. I love Thanksgiving. Nobody sings the turkey's coming to town. They do about Santa. You know, nobody sings about the Easter Bunny. I like all the holidays, Brenda, and you guys are perfect for that because you celebrate all the holidays so well. Well, I think every holiday plays into chocolate extremely well. Uh, Nothing says I love you uh, quite like chocolate. And so we have so much, we have so many pretty things. We just got a delivery in this morning and just pretty tins of of specialty pretzels and all done up for Valentine's Day. It's very festive. Uh, We, of course, have uh, just gotten a big delivery of the, I don't know if you've heard of the hot chocolate bombs, but they will be in full supply for Valentine's Day. Uh, It's just a very, again, you know, every day is special anymore, um, but it's fun when you have something to look forward to and you kind of transform the store, bring out new and different colors. And so, yeah, here we are, all jazzed up and red for Valentine's Day. I'm glad you brought up the hot chocolate bomb. No, you get the the bomb it looks like it's in a cupcake type uh mm-hmm. thing and you just dip it into hot water explain the whole how the process works um it's <laughs> it's the most amazing thing uh i've ever seen we have sold i i wouldn't even begin to tell you the numbers of bombs we've sold but you're right they're they're they come from a cupcake shop here locally carolina cupcakery actually makes those for us. They're beautiful. So they're a big ball, a hollow ball of chocolate, and inside is the hot chocolate and marshmallows. Uh, We've got a couple different flavors. So you actually put them, you need a a larger size mug, you put them in the mug, and you pour hot milk over them. Now, some people like them in coffee, that mocha sort of thing, uh, so you can use hot coffee as well but most people use them for a really really nice cup of hot chocolate so the whole concept is the bomb sort of melts a little bit spins around and then it opens up and you just stir it uh you can even get we have a belgian chocolate dipped spoon so a lot of people will buy the nice spoon to go along with it uh yeah so and they're delicious they're quite the novelty and people are buying them like crazy. We have a unicorn, which is white chocolate with sprinkles. And when it opens up, it has different marshmallows inside, different colors. Great for kids. Actually, I got one for my granddaughter. She's five. And she said, but no, no, I thought there would be a unicorn inside. <laughs> yeah. So kids are having a great time with them. And adults. They're really very popular. Um, Brenda, one of my favorite combinations is peanut butter and chocolate. Talk about some of the other great combinations there that blend really well. The uh, Well, our peanut butter and chocolate is a big favorite. We take uh, white chocolate and mix it with the peanut butter and marble it with the dark chocolate. And that's a huge hit. Um, we have giant peanut butter cups. Oh, my gosh, Greg, they're so good. Yeah. But we have so many combinations. We have uh, all of the different nuts. We have lots of things with caramel. Uh, we have some things with sea salt and chocolate, sea salt, chocolate, caramel, and pecans. Beautiful. Like, this is another good thing for Valentine's Day are the beautiful truffles. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, you know, they're boxed up, and they're just gorgeous. And they're delicious, too. Um, we have pretzel rods dipped in caramel and chocolate. We've got a really nice line of sugar-free. And I think people sometimes forget that there are... My neighbor, for example, um, cannot have sugar, and I occasionally take, um, you know, little little gift bags of chocolates to him, and he just loves them. Mm-hmm. It's a really nice quality of sugar-free. So that's another good option for people that... Still like chocolate, still like sweets, but can't tolerate the sugar. Right. But I tell you, I had some of your candy-coated, like the blue and the red, you know, uh, things I picked out. You had the berry blue oh, and the my cherry goodness. Were here last time. I those love those. very popular, too, and popular at Valentine's Day. Very pretty. 
They can go in a little gift bag or, or a little box of them. Yeah, they're excellent, aren't they? What's the material made out of? I mean, it's really good. Um, you know, it's, it looks like a candied shell, and it's almost, it's not crunchy, though. It's kind of soft, and inside is a layer of chocolate, and then the, like a dried uh, blueberry or dried cherry. Well, like the Royal Chocolate on Facebook, and uh, the phone number is 557-6925. Well, in the next edition of Sports Scene, we'll know who won the Super Bowl. And, of course, we'll talk more about sports and the pandemic as it leads to March Madness and how the NCAA tournament will evolve in basketball and give a more update on what's going on in Hampton Roads as far as sports is concerned. Well, in the next edition of Sports Scene. And I want to thank our guests today, Adam Winkler, George McLean, Brenda Tusing. For more, log on to GJBTV.com. Click the YouTube link for archive shows. Sports scene every Saturday morning from 10 to 11 right here on these stations. I want to thank Colleen as well. Happy New Year once again. I'm Greg Bicavaris. We'll talk to you soon.